Hello, folks. Uh, welcome to Science Talk. This, I am Jim Massa, your host. So in the second of two videos discussing plastic, I want to discuss what's going on with the fish in particular. And let me just kind of reduce my image here. And I want to show you this photo here this photo and i mentioned this in my previous video the photo of a albatross chick that had died obviously dehydrated this was in its stomach all that plastic you can see bottle caps here's some netting you know, like monofilament stuff Got all sorts of plastic things in here. And the bird just ate it. And if they don't know any better. This to me is, is horrifying. It just is. This is just one chick. How many other birds? How many other fish, as I'm going to discuss in this video? How many other you know, marine mammals, invertebrates, plankton? Organisms are ingesting plastic, but you, you would not believe how much they are. And when you factor in bioaccumulation, the concentration of pollutants as you move up the trophic levels, we are also ingesting plastic. You probably don't know it now, but in your feces that you deposited in the toilet this morning, it's probably plastics in there, microplastics, nanoplastics. So... To discuss here with you right now. Enlarge me a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to share with you a report that the NOAA's Pacific Islands Fisheries Science Center conducted, and they looked at larval fish off the western coast of Hawaii. They are eating plastics within weeks of hatching. Researchers dissected 658 larval fish and found plastic particles in the stomachs of 42 of them. Some of the affected fish belong to species that people eat, including swordfish and mahi-mahi. Flying fish, another species that had consumed plastic, are an important food source for tuna. We eat tuna. So the flying fish consume plastic, the tuna consumes the flying fish, tuna gets the plastic into their system, we consume tuna, we get the plastics in our system, and it concentrates as you move up the trophic levels, bioaccumulation. Right. And needless to say, you know, we got the larval fish eating, it, you know, it's gonna go up the food chain and affect larger fish, birds, mammals, marine mammals, so forth. Scientific literature shows that plastics are injurious to a wide array of ocean animals from sea turtles to crabs to corals, the polyps. And that would include your zooplankton. A lot of fish eat zooplankton. And you get krills that eat the zooplankton, and you get cetaceans, the baleen whales, that eat the krill. Just about, probably guaranteed it is about every organism, marine organism that's out there that is a heterotroph has plastic in their system. Now, this is the, uh, the fact that plastics are injurious to many uh, oceanic uh, animals is well known, but NOAA's studies is thought to be the first to focus on plastic ingestion among larval fish in tropical marine ecosystems. It also highlighted the disproportionate presence of plastic in Hawaii's surface slicks. Now, surface slicks, you can see photos of this, are long, narrow strips of water that seem to be calm. 
and it's usually they're created by the physical uh, processes uh, that are taking place at that region. And it is now known because these areas are calm that they're basically are nurseries, they're fish nurseries. And you find high densities of larval fish, phytoplankton and zooplankton. And guess what the larval fish are going to eat? The zooplankton. Researchers discovered that the median plastic density in these slicks was 126 times higher than that of surrounding waters. So the authors write the following statement. To put this into context, median and maximum plastic densities in slicks along West Hawaii were 8.0 and 12.7 fold higher than respective plastic densities recently sampled in the Great Pacific Garbage Patch, which is like the size of France, Texas. Let that sink in for a moment. Larval fish typically eat food that's smaller than one millimeter, and much of the plastic found in these slicks are in that category. Researchers suggested that the fish might be confusing plastic filaments for the antennae of the copepods they prey on. A reasonable hypothesis, I would say. Co-lead researcher, uh, Dr. Jameson Gove, said microplastics is too broad of a label for the types of plastic the fish had ingested in the context of this study. Microplastics, as I mentioned in my prior video, refers to plastics that are five millimeters or smaller, but the greatest threat to larval fish could be pieces that are even smaller, less than one millimeter. So we start getting into the microns or micromillimeter, uh, excuse me, micrometer uh, realm. Right? And uh, even smaller, we get the nano plastics, which are about 100 nanos, which is uh, one tenth of a micron. Dr. Gove goes on to state, it's the plastics that we don't see that are potentially the most harmful to the marine food web, and a lot of plastics are broken down from bigger pieces. They look like they're weathered and fragmented. It's likely they were once bigger pieces of plastic, like a water bottle, and break down smaller and smaller. But as I mentioned in my prior video, they never get into the constituent components. They stay in the, as a polymer. In addition to larger plastics that break down over time, the types of microbeads that are found in, in some personal hygiene products are another source of minuscule plastics. And once these objects enter the ocean, they're nearly impossible to remove. Dr. Gove states there's not a whole lot that can be done about small plastics less than one millimeter. I don't know if a technology exists that can clean it up. Probably need some sort of a filtration system, then you need energy to run the filtration system. With about 17.6 billion pounds of plastic ending up in marine environments each year, the amount of prey-sized plastics in ocean slicks is likely to increase as our plastic trash fragments and degrades, the study authors noted. In other experiments, some species of plankton, marine worms, and other and adult fish consume their food less efficiently after ingesting plastics. There's some interference. So you have the plastics. Obviously, it's not going to be digested in the in the gut. It's going to stay there. Well, now what happens is they ingest other food, but you got this other material that's in the way. So the stomach acids and other digestive enzymes are not going to be able to efficiently break it down. And then you have to pass that into the small intestine where, where the complete breakdown of the material takes place so that absorption can take place. Well, if they're not being broken down efficiently, then not, not as much is going to be able to be absorbed. The animal is not going to get the required nutrients it needs. How many times have you heard of... Uh, Things, uh, situations where an organism has a belly food of stuff, but it's starved to death. 
I've discussed with you in other video segments where I've mentioned whales having plastics in their stomach, you know, like 50 pounds of the stuff, and they starved to death because it, the stomach was blocked. You know, if they ate an actual organic material, they could not digest it. As I mentioned in my prior videos, studies have shown that crabs have difficulty breathing after consuming plastic. Microplastics affect the growth of sea urchins. Now, when it comes to larval fish, there's a lot of uncertainty because there has not been a lot of studies into this question. There's been plenty of research on plastic ingestion among adult fish, but not many on larval fish. So, Dr. Go poses the question, the hypothesis, if you will, is plastic ingestion a death sentence for larval fish? And if so, what does it mean for adult fish? These are unanswered questions that we hope to answer. So he will continue to research this topic. And uh, like everything else in uh, researches, you got to get the funding. So what I want to now show you is this video so give me a few moments here to kind of set things up a bit and once again i want to have you just look at this photo here that's really now imagine opening up uh, the stomach of a whale and seeing you know 25 30 kilos of the stuff it's really alarming I did a recent uh, video called Plastics, a crisis. This is a crisis. Okay, so I'm going to minimize this. And where, there it is. Okay, so let's go full screen here. And I will get rid of myself here. And let's... Uh, Plastics pose a macro threat to baby fish like this one. New research shows baby or larval fish ingest microplastics at staggering rates. So here Many fish spend their first weeks feeding in surface slicks on the ocean surface. Surface slick. Okay, this they just outlined for you here what a surface slick is. You look here, you see some choppy waters on this side and this side, but you, you can actually, and it, it actually. They really, it extends out to here. I can see the slick out to here and even here. So this is all surface slick. This is a calm area due to how the water flows, the, the physical hydrodynamics of the location. And this is where larval fish congregate because it's calm waters for them. They don't have to expend as much energy to swim about. It's, it's easier uh, from an energy point of view. And the surface slick uh, concentrates zooplankton for them you know not to get too technical here but surface slicks tend to be surface convergence zones so you get an accu accumulating uh, of the water there and it's a calming uh aspect we got all this gurgling here there's lateral movement there's some upwellings the mini upwellings that kind of stuff here not to mention wind activity etc so that's a surface slick densities were 100 okay 100 microns okay 1000 microns equals a millimeter so this is about a tenth of a millimeter plastic density 126 times more concentrated in surface slicks 26 times more concentrated in surface slicks than in other nearby surface water overwhelming these tiny fish at their most vulnerable stage and enabling plastic pollution to make its way into the food chain. Oceana campaigns to end plastic pollution by pressuring governments and companies to replace throwaway plastic with plastic-free alternatives. You can help. Join Oceana and support our global campaigns. Okay, now I want to go back to... I'll just replay this video here. And it is. Microplastics pose a macro threat to baby fish like this one. 
New research shows baby or larval fish ingest microplastics at staggering rates. Many fish spend their first weeks feeding in surface licks on the ocean surface. Seriously? Surface slicks are narrow bands of smooth water and serve as nursery habitat for baby fish. Plastic. Okay, I, this is where I wanted to stop it here. Okay, so they've got, uh, looks like a, I think that's a nickel. But I have a coin here. So here's your scale. This is one millimeter in length. So these are small uh, fish here. I mean, if you extrapolate this out, this fish is probably about two centimeters in length. <clears throat> this one, you know, not even a, a centimeter in length. But here is a microplastic filament. Basically, uh, 500 microns across. Okay. And you can see how that can readily enter a fish's digestive system. They can easily ingest that and they now have plastic in their system this the small piece right here you can easily see how this fish would you know gobble that down so this is you know how ubiquitous is this problem and that's what dr gove is, go, is going to try and uh, discover and uh, with his hopefully research to come densities were 126 times more concentrated in the surface lakes than in other nearby surface water, overwhelming these tiny fish at their most vulnerable stage and enabling plastic pollution to make its way into the food chain. Oceana campaigns to end plastic pollution by pressuring governments and companies to replace throwaway plastic with plastic-free alternatives. You can help. Join Oceana and support our global campaigns. Okay, there, there's the general website there. If you want to read the articles on plastic, instead of having join, you can uh, type in blog. So oceana.org forward slash blog. And there, there you find uh, articles, a little more detail than I was able to get into my videos, but the information is there. So let's... Uh, so, so there you have it. Um, I wanted to bring, you know, because we we know about the large plastics, the macroplastic, the microplastic. In some ways, I think is more insidious of a problem. And we, and when organisms ingest it, it is not good. So, uh, thank you for your time. I hope that uh, this will spur folks into action because eventually it ends up in our systems here. So we will talk soon. Hello folks, this is Jim here with Science Talk asking you to please subscribe to my channel and to inform others of my channel and of the work that I do. Please share to social media platforms that you use. Also, as a reminder, don't forget to click the bell so that you know when I load up more videos. Finally, I ask that you support the work that I do by becoming a patron at patreon.com. Details in the description box below. Thank you for your support.